And, um, and I didn't believe it was going to happen until we actually hovered over the top of the empty stadium. And you saw all the people standing outside waiting to get in. That's when it kind of became real to me. It was just so huge. It was almost a mythical that, you know, we're going to try and pull this off. Technically, it was a nightmare. Thank goodness neither Bob nor I tried to do any of the nuts and bolts that, that put these things together. We had brilliant people who are used to doing concerts on that kind of scale. We had the BBC uh, covering it for five hours. Uh, one of our band-aid trustees, the body of people that we put together to oversee the, the funding uh, of all the projects that we've done over the last 36, 37 years, um, is, is uh, Lord Michael Grade, who at the time was the head of the BBC, a very, very handy man to know if you're going to put on a global concert. And so, luckily we didn't have anything to do with the, you know, the staging and the, all of that. We just came up with the, the, the kind of concept. Um, so, I, I was standing backstage, the actual dressing rooms, because there were so many artists and management and people, you know, everyone has people. So, there were hundreds of people backstage and we couldn't fit them all in. So the dressing rooms were actually Wembley Arena, which was next door. And you had to be ferried back and forth on a little shuttle bus. And um, what they did was all the artists wanted to be there, of course, for the opening of this thing. Even if you went on for hours, you wanted to be there at the beginning because it was magical. And we were all put into a room about half the size of this. <laughs> and. You could see, you looked around the room and there was a kind of nervous hubbub going on. And we kind of broke down into component musical styles. So you'd get Spandau and Duran and stuff all kicked in the corner together. <laughs> and then you get the rockers over here doing their thing. And the moment our classical British rock band status quo kicked off with rocking all over the world. You looked around the room and you could see, irrespective of how cool any of those genres thought they were, the heads all started going, yeah. <laughs> And it was like that scene from the Full Monty, you know the movie Full Monty with the strippers? When they learn the dance routine and they're standing in a line and the music comes on and they all, without thinking, they'll start doing the dance routine. It was like that. It was glorious. And uh, my bit was over and done with in the first hour. Uh, so I got to go out and see some of the other artists. And without a word of a lie, this is how sad we all are. I'm sitting there watching the stage and the announcer's coming on next. And what passes through my mind? I don't like him very much. Uh, I, might, I might just pop out. And then of course they start. And you go, oh, jeez, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. That's, of course, that's why they are mega stars, because they are brilliant at what they do. And I would be sitting there doing that for two or three hours. But, no, I don't think I like this. Oh, oops, okay. Get put in my place every time. Uh, so it was glorious. And if you saw the movie uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, where they recreated uh, the old Wembley, which doesn't exist anymore, the scenes from behind. Freddie looking out at the crowd is exactly what I remember. It's exactly what I saw. And it was incredible. I mean, they, they did a brilliant job of that. And we, um, Ultravox at the time, used to take five hours to do a sound check because <laughs> we were using very basic equipment. Uh, it was pre MIDI, you couldn't connect a drum machine and a synthesizer and all of that stuff. So everything we had was customised. And it used to take five hours to do a sound check. We didn't get a sound check at Live Aid. No one did. So we chose four songs that would be the simplest, and the least technical ones, so that we, it wouldn't go horribly wrong, we hoped. So, um, and what happened was, how they kept it in time, which most people don't know, is as you're about to walk on stage, the, the guy with the clipboard would say, okay, all right, guys, you've got 18 minutes. Everyone's got 18 minutes. Uh, you walk on and you'll notice there's a traffic light system either side of the stage 
facing you, not facing the audience. And you walk on, it'll be green, 16 minutes, it goes amber, and you won't see it turn red because the power goes off. <laughs> and that's the only way they could keep this bunch of old tarts from going, oh, let's do another one. Let's do another. <laughs> and messing up all the satellite feeds and things. So it was, it was absolutely glorious. So uh, yeah, let me do dancing for you. <laughs>